Today we'll be looking at the top 10 biggest Pilgrim Camino de Santiago hydration mistakes that you are making, or you would make, or you would have made, or you would had made had you not seen this video first. I'm getting you there. That's right, folks. I need a few more than 10. We'll see. We'll see how generous I'm feeling today. Until then, hit it! Okay, welcome back. So, number one, bringing too small a bottle with you on your Camino. I know you've probably read in more than one place that oh, you just need one bottle of water. Founder along the way, yada, yada, yada. Then that may be true on the Camino Frances. However, if you're doing a different Camino, like Via de la Plata, or maybe the Norte, or, or even on the Meseta, there are ca cafes and bars are few and far in between. Few and far between. Few and entre. I don't know. But you know what I'm getting at here. So, bringing too small a bottle of water could be problematic. Bring a nice, well, I recommend a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle. And again, if you haven't seen my video on the perfect Pilgrim hydration system, check it out now. In fact, pause this, watch that, and then come back to this. So, that's mistake number one, bring too small a bottle. Number two, so having that too small a bottle or having any bottle out of reach if you're not using a hydration system, meaning a tube, um, water bladder, or tube, water bottle system, that means you're reaching for a bottle. Make sure it's within reach. Some backpacks, fewer these days, are hard to reach the water pocket without taking off the backpack altogether. So, you know, when you're trying on different backpacks, keep this in mind. That's one of the most important features on a modern backpack, if you ask me is to have the water bottle within reach. Make sure you can just, without pulling a muscle, depending on your age. Um, I mean, you get to a certain age where you sneeze and suddenly you have to go to the hospital, but I digress. Um, make sure it's within reach. You can pull it out. Also great to be able to see how much water you're actually carrying. So some people have clips, they keep it on their backpack strap. Other people keep it on their hip. Whatever the case may be, make sure it's close at hand. Otherwise you might find yourself not drinking enough water. And that's bad. Lots of bad things come from that. Don't be that pilgrim. Number three, overfilling your water bladder. If you are wanting to use a water bladder, if you are wanting to use a water bladder, if you use a water bladder, don't overfill these bad boys. They often live in the back of your backpack, that back pocket where everything's snug up against it. If it's too big, the slightest, like, anything can happen. Like, you, know, you can, in a perfect world, you'll get to Santiago unscathed but things happen if you're using a backpack transport system whatever things come in contact other bags don't contact your pack you may fall on it whatever these things can explode inside your backpack it doesn't happen often but it can happen so don't overfill it you leave a little wiggle room in there if you will for the water to smoosh around without bursting the seams number four not cleaning your hydration system i mean they look kind of technical. I highly recommend one nonetheless. But the tubes, the water bladders, which I don't really care for, as you can't tell, uh, the water bottle, you're going to use these things every day. So keep them clean. Um, I see a lot of pilgrims just refilling a bottle, hardly ever cleaning it. If that, once they get to the hostel, they're taking care of their laundry, they're working on dinner, they're doing everything but cleaning their water bottle. The first thing you want to do is clean out that water bottle and give it enough time open and air drying. Uh, Nalgene bottles are the best, I think, because they air dry really fast due to the wide mouth. So you rinse this thing out, warm, hot water, soap, whatever you got. Clean this thing out, flip it over where it can still breathe, or flip it on its side, or on a tilt, if you will. Same thing goes for the tube. Just flush some water through that, whip it around like a lasso, clean it out. If you're using an everyday spring water bottle or some other type of water bottle, same goes for that. Just clean your water bottle daily. Number five. And you see this, people walking with their water bottle in their hand. Now I know a couple steps back or a couple numbers back, I talked about having your water close at hand. While hand and close were in the same sentence, don't have the bottle in your hand. That's just a bad idea. 
uh, for a couple of reasons. One, if you fall, if you fall, you need your hands and you're going to hold on to the, you're just going to fall weird if you do in fact fall. And let's hope you don't fall. Not many people fall, but if you do fall, you're holding a water bottle. It's, you're going to land weird. You're going to fall wrong and you might, you might hurt yourself. And the second part to that is it affects your gait. Anytime you carry anything in one hand or the other or your backpack or you're using sticks or you're not using sticks, any type of weight shift happening on your body at some level is affecting your feet and affecting your gait and how you walk. And when you do that, you can cause problems on your feet. I know it's like, oh, you're overthinking this. I'm not overthinking this. Trust me. This can throw off your gait and you can run into some problems. So please just find a place to put your water bottle, be it on your straps, inside your backpack, or even, as I highly recommend, connected to a hydration system using a tube. And then you just forget about it. A little aside, you will sometimes see people walking, holding hands. You'll see couples doing that. And then, while that's cute and all, and, and I'm sure meaningful for many, and uh, not to poo-poo on it at all, but it's just dangerous. I was watching a couple do that as I was leaving Osabrero down, uh, down the hill out of Osabrero. A beautiful morning, but they were doing that. And I'd heard of this couple. They'd been holding, you will always hear of either the monk that's walking, the sexy monks you sometimes hear about. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, maybe the firefighter. You will hear about different people along the trail and you'll hear about the couple holding hands. There's always one or two. There's always a pair. And uh, I guess there has to be. Anyways, so um, holding hands. Yeah, it's dangerous for the same reason that holding a bottle while walking is. Uh, especially down hills. Now I was watching these people walk down hills and they're both like moving. I, I thought one of them was going to take a fall and pull the other one down. So it's just dangerous at the end of the day. It's affecting your gait while you're walking. Again, your balance. And it's also dangerous for the other person. You can pull that other person down. You can pull that person off balance. So again, it's adorable. I appreciate it. Um, but dangerous. So think about that. Number six is filtering your water. You want to filter your water. Unless you're buying spring water day in and day out. But if you're drinking from the fountains, it's a good idea to filter your water. This is a mistake people make. Granted, the water is safe there. You will see a sign that says portable water. But, I mean, unless it's being tested regularly. And, you know, parts of Spain, northern Spain, get a lot of water. A lot of rain. So, I mean, with a lot of rain comes problems, too, with sewage and everything else. I don't know how it is where you live. But, so keep that in mind. Filter your water you can. There's companies like Life Straw that have a water bottle with a filter inside. You can add your own filter, as I did in another video. I'm telling you, you need to watch that hydration video. You need to watch that hydration video. Um, but always filter your water. Why take a risk otherwise? You don't ever want to be worried about water. You should be drinking enough water. That's why, again, I recommend a drinking hydration system with a tube. So it's always there. You're never, it's never not in front of your face. You just don't want to forget to drink water. And this is the best way, I think, to have water always there. Because one of the main signs of dehydration is you don't feel the need to drink water. I think there's a design fault there. I mean, the human body, like, why would that happen? Why would that be a thing? Like, you need water, but your mind shuts off the fact that you want water. So, I don't know. Maybe the brain compensates for that because the fact that we can realize or know that this is what happens to our physical... Ghost in the machine, people. Ghost in the machine. Number seven. I think this is number seven. Did I mess this up? Number seven. Don't wash your water bottle stuff in the dishwasher. If you're at a fancy albergue or uh, maybe an Airbnb and there's a dishwasher on hand and you can figure out how to use that, God, hopefully they're nothing like the stovetops in Spain. So if you know what I'm talking about. It can damage some of the components. It won't damage the Nalgene bottle if you're using a Nalgene bottle, but some other bottles that maybe contain BPA, I don't know what some of the bottles in Spain contain, but uh, that rhymed. But don't use a dishwasher. Wash them by hand. Same goes for the tube. If you have a drinking tube, if you have a drinking tube system, don't ever, ever wash this in the dishwasher. It destroys the interior of the tube. It just eats it up. I don't know if it's the heat or if it's the soap or whatever, but always wash these by hand as well. Neuro fortune. Eight. I think. Eight. Don't ever, ever, ever put alcohol in your bottle, in your water bottle. If Not unless you plan on just using that for wine or alcohol or beer after the fact. But if you plan on drinking water out of it again, don't ever put alcohol in these things. This is probably something you should learn in college if you went to college or maybe something you learned in technical school. 
gives the, the pla it interacts with the plastic on most water bottles, gives it a gamey type flavor after the fact when you drink water out of it. So no alcohol. Number nine. I've seen this twice on my first Camino and my second Camino is people that were using water bladders rather than having them inside their backpack, they had them on the outside of their backpack and it wasn't covered or anything like that. It's just a dangling clear water bladder on the outside of the backpack. But it must have been, I mean, I noticed this person doing this a couple days in a row, but every time I saw them, it was like two in the afternoon. It must have been so warm and miserable to drink. And again, cool water, you're, you're apt to drink that more. If the water tastes funky from sun, plastic, water combination, you're, you're more likely to not drink it as much as you should be drinking it. So always put your water bladder Gross. or whatever the water receptacle is out of the sun in your bag. If it's a bladder, keep it in the backpack, not on the outside of the backpack. Number 10. Yes, and this is my final mistake. Is it? Kind of. I have one more left after this, but number 10 is not knowing how to turn on the fountain. Sometimes you will get to a fountain on the, on the trail that it's yeah. not obvious how to turn it on. Some of them are constantly like, running. Um... But some, you need to find the button. Spoiler alert, it's on the ground. If you can't find the button in front of your face, it's on the ground. Um, if you're old enough, you remember the hide beam button in the car on the floor, that look clicky button. There are fountains in Spain that also have that little hide beam button on, well, obviously it's not high beams. Maybe it is high beams, but it's water. You push that and then it'll start flowing. So if you're having trouble turning on the fountain, chances are the button is on the ground. Always look down. And lastly, bonus mistake for those paying attention. I think this is number 11. Know a little Spanish in regard to safety. Like you need to know if the agua is potable or not. And luckily the word is pretty much the same in English. Just pronounced a little different. Uh, agua potable. Ooh, I just bit the side of my mouth when I said that. Agua potable. Um, you want to know that the water is drinkable. That's what you're looking for. So those were the biggest top 10 pilgrim hydration fails, water bottle fails. I hope you learned something from them and it can take with you along the way. Take that knowledge with you along the way. Take that knowledge with you and share it along the way. You know, folks, at the end of the day, you just need to watch my whole episode on building the better mousetrap no not mousetraps building the better hydration kit this will change your life until next time remember to subscribe comment and subscribe and like this video please before you go i know you're rushing to go on to the next video but please like it comment on it subscribe to it and that will keep you in the loop for every new video that drops with each week every new unique and interesting tip brought to you by the shelch that's creepy. That's creepy. That, that was creepy. I apologize for that. When did we know? What's the Wi Fi code? Are you gonna get the Wi Fi code? The Wi-Fi code? Do you have the Wi-Fi code? Folks, when you're checking into an albergue, the first thing you should do is find where that sign is with the Wi-Fi code on it and take a picture of it with your phone. Do that. Thank me later.